Ah, that monotone sound as the machine starts up and kicks in. This is me on my birthday about 30 years ago, where my mom gave me a real, honest-to-God, full, upright, arcade, super Pac-Man machine. It became a fixture in my house for years to come, and brought practically every kid in the neighborhood over to come and see it for real. I played this thing to no end, daily for years. It sat in our garage even after I moved to Japan, eventually getting sporadic plays for nostalgia purposes. The machine did fall apart over the course of 30 years. First the coin counter went, then the monitor broke. It had a strange tick where black pixels would disappear and the red pixels changed to black. It's hard to explain and impossible to show. But this made things like the apples in stage one look black and not red, and the ghost Blinky black as well. Though in Pac-Mania, that game did have black ghost. At the end of the machine's life, the wires inside started to disintegrate and eventually died. I racked up some pretty good scores too, and while I can't remember exactly, there was a point where I could get 200,000 without losing a life or breaking a sweat. So, as the machine goes on, play after play, and games evolve onward, past arcade and Atari to Nintendo, past Nintendo to Super Nintendo and Sega, past the 2D of Sega and Nintendo to PlayStation 1 and 2, past PS1 and 2 to PS3 and 4, past the point where someday every game is just going to be data floating in the air, Super Pac-Man has always been there. You know, as gamers grow up and interaction changes from one-on-one -on -one talking in arcades and sharing secret tips and gamer mags to full-on game reviews and establishing a real permanent game culture in magazines like Nintendo Power, EGM, Die Hard Game Fan, and VGCE, moving on to the early message boards and sites like game FAQs, which is still around, to things like today, like live streaming and Let's Play videos that are now seen ad infinitum on YouTube. I'm still here too, and I'm still playing, and I likely will still continue to play until I am physically unable to do so. It's been 35 years now since I started playing games. I've amassed a large collection, and I've lost them all too. I've been through every major game event except the absolute beginning, and I even moved to Japan. Of course, not just for the games. There's a lot of reasons, but it's great to be able to see things from this point of view where so many great games came from. So, I figured it's time to jump into the crowded pool and contribute my own work into this great world of game videos. You know, I can't even remember the first time I played a video game. If you were born in the 70s like me and grew up in the 80s, video games were just ubiquitous. You couldn't go five minutes without seeing an arcade or home Atari system or something related in some way. I know it's the same way now, but I've always felt there was a period between the mid 80s and now where Game culture was kind of off to the side and not as mainstream as it is now or as it was back then. Pac-Man was everywhere. By 1982 there were three games in the arcade with various upgrades, TV shows, serials, toys, books, even an LP record.
I can barely remember getting an Atari 2600. I had just kept asking for it for Christmas to play Pac-Man at home. I have no memory whatsoever of that, but only the stories my parents told me. Did I see a commercial? Did someone tell me about it? Did I see an in-store display? Who knows? It's all lost to time. But I do clearly remember opening the box. Which, if you recall, had pictures of smiling kids and no pictures of Pac-Man on the box. What's this? I asked. The look on my parents' face that they gave me was so crazy. The look said, This is what you asked for, Atari and Pac-Man. I was so young, I couldn't think about how it would actually work, what it would be like, or what it looked like. What would it be when I opened the box? I couldn't wrap it around my head. But I do remember hooking it up and going nuts all night, till about 8 o'clock, that Christmas in 1982. So I've been playing this game for a few minutes now, and of course I'm playing on an emulator, and even after all this time, though, my, my brain is still wired to the joystick, and using a gamepad just isn't cutting it. I, I keep slipping up where I never would with a real stick, but oh well. So, I guess I was about two or three by the time I got to play Pac-Man for the first time. I just can't recall it. I have no actual memories of what the first games I ever played was. But, the local shop and save built a side area for arcade machines that my mom would let me go to while she was shopping. I do remember playing a few games around the age of four. And the game that I played most was, you guessed it, Super Pac-Man. In fact, it was the same Super Pac-Man that I later got on my birthday and went on to play for decades. And how did I end up with a full-sized arcade game anyway? Let me tell you the story. My uncles owned a bar, and in it, they would have things to the side, like cigarette machines, Lance Cracker vending machines, and jukeboxes. They got them from coin-op distributors. Now, we all think of the word coin-op synonymous with video games, but it really is any machine that takes coins. Video games are just the last iteration of that. The company that dealt with my uncles was really just an older guy and his son, but they were well-known. And they also knew my mom, who worked there with my uncles. When the market crashed, these guys had a lot of video games that were suddenly worth next to nothing. The older guy who ran the company just out and asked my mom one day if I liked video games and if I wanted any. It would cost him nothing to give it to us, but would cost him more if he had to throw it away in the dumpster, so it went to us. Can you believe it? Could you imagine being 8 or 9 or 10 years old and just come home from playing outside and there's a full-sized arcade game in the kitchen? There are no words to explain that feeling. I saw a video of a guy who talked about getting a Super Nintendo as a surprise on launch day, which is very cool in its own way. But launch day or not, I think almost every kid could imagine at some point they'd get a Super Nintendo or a Genesis or PS2, whatever, because it's practical. They're affordable and fit under the TV. Even these days, 
Almost anybody who wants one on launch day or near to it can get one. Even if you had to wait until they were $99, you could expect to get one. But who ever dreamed that getting an arcade game was possible? The only time I ever saw kids with arcade games was in the TV show Silver Spoons and the movie Big. And my life was nothing like those. I don't really know what these videos are going to become. I don't know what's going to happen to them. This is just the first one. Um, basically, just doing it for fun. To share stories and find other people out there who really enjoy playing games. Uh, so, whatever I make, I hope that you come and watch it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it. And uh, I hope we get to share some stories, memories, information, everything. Well, there you have it. I went through each of the 16 stages, showed you each of the 16 fruits, I suppose. I mean, other Pac-Man games call them fruits, but some of these things like the Galaxian, the birthday present, the bell, they're not fruits. But I don't know what to call them. Anyway, I got to show you all of them. I went through almost the entire cycle without dying. Kinda hit a little bump there at the end, but uh, a pretty good game of Pac-Man all around. And uh, let's see how long... Let's see how long I can keep going until we get this game over. I think it's going to be pretty quick because I am trying to talk and play and record and we'll just... One more thing as I'm playing through this and you're watching it, I didn't go into the detail about the strategy or uh, hints or tips or gameplay or anything like that because this is just the backdrop to the story I want to tell. But if you notice, after each cutscene, the position of the key that unlocks the door to get to the superpower pellet changes. And uh, once you figure out the position of where all these keys are and what doors open what, the game gets a lot easier and the scores can go up really, really high. Well, there you go. I made it almost through every stage without dying. I uh, hit a little snag there at the end. But uh, I haven't even remembered the last time I played Super Pac-Man. I guess it's been about a year and a half or so. But uh, the patterns are still burned in my brain, and they probably will be forever. Thank you very much for watching. And as I said before, I don't know exactly what this channel is going to be as we make it, as we go on. But I do plan to put a few videos on in the spring. I do plan to do some Let's Play videos. And if it catches on and enough people watch it, enough people want it, during the summer and the fall this year, I will make some more and we'll just keep cranking them out. So please come again soon and good night.